Now we shall go into the string copy function. The main purpose of this program is to demonstrate the usage of strings along with the user defined functions. Here we are not using a built in function strcpy to copy from a source string to the destination string. The input for this program is a string and the output copies the characters from the source string and display it on the destination string. Now before moving into the actual program we shall take a look at what are strings and what are user defined functions. Now we will study about the logic of string copy function. Before actually understanding the logic of string copy function, we will discuss what are functions. A function is a group of statements that togetherly performs a common task. That is here for example consider a wide main function, one of the famous functions till now we had studied from where our execution of the program starts. Inside the void main function we have declared variables such as a, b and d of integer data type followed by clear screen and now we need to add the two numbers a and b and store it in one more variable d without direct addition and for that we are using a what is known as function which is explained as follows. The values of a and b are entered and the inputs are taken in using scanner statements. Here we can observe that d equals add of a comma b. Here I am calling the function add which contains the parameter a and b and the result what has been computed will be saved in variable d. As soon as the control goes to add of a comma b as we can see the arrow mark it moves to a called function. Here the called function is add of int a comma int b where a and b are the two parameters that I am passing for this particular function. Int c is one more variable which has been declared in this called function. Now c is equal to a plus b. The addition of variables a and b are stored in one more variable c. If I return the value of c that will be straight away coming back to the main function which is also called as calling function. Here since my main function is only calling the function it is called as calling main function. This part calls and this part is being called. Hence the name calling function and called function. Once when the called function executes its procedure, it returns back the answer from where it has been always called. Here this has been called from my main function and the control returns back to main. The value computed a plus b will be stored in c and will be returned and that value will be assigned back to D. If I print the value of D then I will get some answer. This is how a function works. Now let us move back to the string copy. The logic behind the string copy function is to copy from a source string to a destination string. For that we have two methods. One is the usage of library function strcpy which has been defined in string.h header file. As we know that in our program we should not use the library function and we are focusing on one more user defined function. For that we will consider what is a string. A string is an array of characters. We know the declaration of array is the array name followed by the size with a data type. If the data type is char in nature that means to say that it is character and hence this becomes an array of characters which is nothing but a string. 
In our next example, consider s of 5, we have s of 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4, totally 5 blocks of memory allocated since my size is 5. I have filled up with v, t, u, v moving to the very first location, t the very next, u the next after and each and every string is terminated using a null character. Slash 0 within single quotes means that it is null character. Every string is terminated using a null character. The logic behind this program is, the copying of the program is, see consider this as a source string, this as a destination string, here I have S1 as a source string, S2 as a destination string. I want to copy the characters from source 1 to source destination S2. This can be done character by character copying until it involves the null character making it that that is the end of the string. The first character that is V is being copied from S1 of 0 to S2 of 0 and I is a variable which keeps on incrementing to the next position until it indicates the end of string using a null character. Hence, the remaining characters like T and U are also being copied and thus the complete copying from source string to the destination string occurs. This is how the string copy function that is a user defined function works. Now, let us look into the program to copy a string without using the library function. The function to copy a string is as follows. Before actually looking into the function, we will go to the main function from where the execution of our program begins. Here is the main program from where the execution of the program begins. In the very first line of our main function is the declaration part where we are declaring two strings that is string 1 and string 2 which size 50. Next we have is the clear screen which is used to clear the output screen. Next we need to enter the source string from which we have to copy to the destination string. To scan the source string we are using unformatted input statement known as gets. Here gets of str1 make sure that the inputs of the strings are scanned in. Next we will call the function strcopy of str1 comma str2 which is a user defined function to copy from a source string to the destination string. Here we have the user defined function to copy a string given by void strcopy of char s1 of 50 char s2 of 50 where s1 and s2 are the two argument strings that are being passed to the function. Here i is a variable which is initialized to 0 which is integer data type. Next while s1 of i not equal to null that is we have not yet reached the end point of the first string or the source string. If that is the case next we need to copy each and every character one by one to the destination string that is done by using s2 of i equals s1 of i where every value is copied character by character with an increment in i. When i takes the 0th position the character v is copied, when i is at 1 t is copied and the i is 2 u is copied until it indicates the null character in my source string which indicates the end of the string. Next finally we need to append a null character to the destination string making sure that that is the end of the copied destination string. Once copying has been done the value is returned back to the main function where it the destination string is printed. 
To print the destination string, we use format unformatted output statement known as puts. Here, since the destination string is in str2, we are using puts of str2 where the destination string is being printed. This concludes the string copy program. Now, the program is ready for compilation and execution. The compilation of this program can be done using Alt F9. Since there are no warnings or errors, we can directly execute using Control F9. It is asking us to enter the source string. This is the input string or the source string what I give. Suppose if I give the input string as VTU, this will be copied on to our destination string and the output we can clearly see that is destination string VTU. This completes the string copy function without using the standard library function.